you prepare for a 100-mile race mentally? I think that's an important part of it. The mental preparation is um, maybe something that's overlooked sometimes. People get very intimidated by the distance. And what takes you from 80 kilometers or 50 miles up to the 100-mile distance is your mental kind of approach to it. Um, the first time that I ever ran 100 miles, uh, I had never run further than 50 miles before, and that was only three weeks before the race. So it was definitely a mental thing. Which race was that that was your first? The Leadville 100, yeah. And, and that was, is that when you won it, or was that just a... a yeah, no, that was 2006, it? the first time I won it, really? yeah. So the first time you ran a 100 mile race, mm -hmm. you won it? Yeah. Wow, yeah. how did that make you feel? Uh, it made me feel like I could do well on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's weird because you, you, you finish 100 miles like that and it's, especially your first time, it's a super humbling thing because, I mean, I got to 80 miles there and I always knew I was going to finish, but it, I was walking and I was like, there's just no way, I'm going to have to walk the entire way to the finish. But you have that, I don't know, that experience of coming out of a low unexpectedly and I think that's sort of the quintessential ultra experience is going through those peaks and valleys of energy and, and emotions and realizing that you can rebound from a really low point. And that goes back to the mental game is it's not going to go perfect all day at the 100 mile distance ever and you're going to have to, it becomes a problem solving game of well do I need extra calories or water or uh, do I need to back off the pace a little bit and just realizing that that's the whole game is enduring through those variables and uh, being prepared for that mentally that you know, there's going to be a tough spot but it can get better later on. And what do you do when it really starts to hurt? The whole discomfort thing, for me, I have to decide before I start the race, before I'm on the starting line, that I'm going to finish no matter what. Because if I go in with any doubt in my mind, it, it's easy to rationalize a DNF while you're on the race course. Because, yeah, because you're uncomfortable for a long time. And uh, so, but if I go in with the conviction that I'm going to finish, when those doubts arise, you just you just push aside the thought of dropping out and and just work towards an intermediate goal. Well, I just want to get to the next aid station, and then you know, or the top of this hill, and then to the next aid station, and so on. Uh, you can't think about the end until you're actually getting near the end. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it just becomes demoralizing. You want to drop, but yeah. <laughs> and so, what do you wish you'd known before you did your first one? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um. Well, I'm going to flip it around actually and say that the ignorance that you have going into your first 100 mile race is sort of underrated, I think, and really valuable. And for me, that was certainly the case for me. If I had gone with conventional wisdom beforehand, I think I would have limited myself and maybe not have had as good of a race as I ended up having or as successful of a race. Um, and so I think it's important to uh, go in with an open mind to what kind of experience you can have, that it isn't going to necessarily be this kind of soul-crushing, I don't know, negative thing. But yeah, it can be a really positive thing. It's going to be really hard no matter what. Uh, what I wish I'd known? Yeah, I guess that the whole, the whole cliche that it doesn't always get worse uh, turns out to be true. Um, maybe it's hard to believe that until it actually happens to you, but that's something that's worth knowing beforehand. That Yeah, you can be feeling horrible and still feel great later on in the race. Well, say somebody's going to do their first 100 miler, say mm -hmm. next year. What's your biggest piece of advice for them before the 100 miler race to do with training? You need to get a couple of long runs, you know, and maybe that comes in the form of a race. And by long, I mean seven or eight hours on your feet kind of thing, which for me ends up being around 50 miles. But the distance isn't so important as uh, time on your feet, I think. Um, because, you know, maybe someone in the mid-pack, a 50-mile training run would take 10 or 12 hours or something, which I think it ends up being a little too long. Uh, so it helps to do intermediate races along the way because at a race you have the support of aid stations and that kind of thing. It's nice to build up to the 100-mile distance. Um, but don't underestimate getting a couple of those longer efforts in. I think it's important to get that time on your feet, especially before your first 100 miler. Um, in subsequent 100 milers, having that experience, that first experience under your belt, I don't think it's as necessary to do all the long runs, but the first time, definitely. And if nothing else, I mean, you, you try out different kinds of fuel, uh, you build mental confidence for enduring the distance. Uh, yeah, long runs are important. <laughs> 
fantastic. And then during your first 100 miler, mm -hmm. um, what's your top piece of advice there? During the race, I would say my top advice is to stay in the moment and don't project too far into the, into the, race, the distance of the race. Uh, because it goes back to, like I was saying, you can have a demoralizing low point at 25 miles, and you're like, oh gosh, I'm only a quarter of the way through. Uh, and it, it's really easy to get down on yourself, but especially with so much distance remaining, yeah, it's a long time for things to turn around too. So just, to, just remember during the race that there's gonna be low patches, they might come earlier than you expect, and that it will get better. And anything around nutrition during the race? It's, I mean, I, I avoid talking about nutrition because it's so individual. Mm, it's, yeah. there, I don't think there are really any hard and fast rules. So many different things work for people. Uh, I stick to sugar and water and salt, but that's, I've had pretty good success with that. Um, what, literally sugar from a bag? Or uh, I'm gels, 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 yes. I, uh, I, you know, it's all the same, like gels and candy are the same thing, basically, you know? Um, gummy bears and a, a goo chomp are essentially the same thing. Uh, so yeah, some kind of quick sugar and then, but a lot of people that doesn't work for them. Their stomachs go bad, they need more solid food. So I don't really have, another thing, but just, you should be trying to get in two or 300 calories an hour um, and probably drinking, trying to stay on top of your hydration before you get behind. A lot of the races in the States are hot, so that's always an issue, it seems like. Uh, post race then, how should you recover from a 100 miler? Well, I don't know how you should recover from a 100 miler. For me, it, it takes a while. Like if I'm running 100 miles, it's been an all out effort and I, I need a month of like, well, at least a week of no running at all, maybe two weeks. It takes me a while to be hungry again after a 100 miler, but yeah, then just eating normal food. And you do a lot of cross training now. Yeah, so I mean, cross training is definitely an important part of my overall training, uh, biking in the summer, skiing in the winter. So now, uh, being the end of November, uh, schemo season is upon us, and I'll be doing that through the spring, basically, yeah. Awesome. Well, hope to see you back in the UK in the spring. Thanks very much for talking to us today.